Today, we will make freedom quilt art. Did you know quilts aren't only used to keep warm? During the times of the Underground Railroad, quilts acted like billboards to tell people messages. People would hang their quilts outside with blocks that meant different things to share information. Some patterns showed when it was safe, others gave a place to rest, and others provided clothes. Today we will make a pattern for the North Star, which showed to head north to freedom in Canada. This is what it looks like. For this project today, I will need a ruler. I will also be using some watercolor paper or some thicker painting paper. I have measured this out so it's eight inches long by four inches tall. I also have a dark and light piece of construction paper. These are eight inches by eight inches. I have some scissors, a pencil, I have some stuff for paint and I will be using glue as well. But the first thing I wanna do is add some measurements to my piece of paper. I wanna go ahead and divide my paper in half at the four inch mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and make little marks at four inches and I'm going to connect those lines with a straight line with my pencil. I also want to divide those sections in half, so I'm making marks at my two inch line and my six inch line as well. I'm going to draw a line to connect my marks so that now I have a line every two inches across my paper. Now I also want to divide my paper up the long way by two inches so I'm gonna go ahead and put marks on both sides and draw a line across to divide that into two inches as well. You can see I now have equal two by two inch squares. I wanna go ahead and divide these squares into triangles, so I'm gonna draw lines diagonally across my squares to turn them into triangles. I'm gonna do that by making an X over my two squares that I originally started with. I am being very careful to match up my corners so that I have very equal and even triangles. This will make a big difference when I am making my quilt piece. You can see now I have my paper divided how I would like it. So it's two inch by two inch squares and then divided those squares into triangles. Now I'm ready to move on. I'm gonna go ahead and get some paint ready. I'm gonna use tempera paint and I'm going to get the colors red yellow and blue and white. I'm going to flip my paper upside down so that all of my lines are on the bottom of my paper and I'm going to go ahead and get my brush ready to use my three primary colors and white. I'm going to use these colors to try to see how many colors I can mix. So I'm going to start off first by just painting with the primary colors. So I'll do a big patch of yellow, and it doesn't really matter where you paint it. And then I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna change to another color. Maybe I'll even add a little white to my yellow because that would be another shade of yellow here. 
Next, I'm gonna clean my brush and switch to red. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a red section somewhere on my paper. Doesn't really matter where or how large or small your sections are. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my red to make it kind of a pink shape. And then I'm gonna make sure to wash my brush in between colors with some water. And now I'm gonna to switch to my blue. And I now have the three primary colors on my paper. Now I also wanna to try to mix my primary colors to get the secondary colors. So once I've got my three primary colors on my paper somewhere, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing the secondary colors. I'm just using a little bit of paint at a time so that I still will have some left to mix other colors as needed. I'm gonna mix yellow and red to make orange. And I'm gonna put that somewhere else on my paper. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white into my orange as well. It kind of makes it a peachy color. And I can put that somewhere else on my paper. Then I'm gonna clean my brush and try to mix another secondary color. Maybe I'll do purple next with a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. I can always add white to make a little lighter version of it. Then I'm gonna wash my brush and try for my last secondary color, which is green. So I'll use some yellow and then I'll mix it in with some blue and see if I can get some green. And I'll go ahead and use that to fill in some of the empty spaces on my paper. I'll add a little more yellow to even make a yellow green, or I'll add a little more blue to make a blue green. So once you've done the primary colors and the secondary colors, you can see if you can go even beyond that by making the colors in between. You can also try adding white to any of the colors to lighten them. I wanna go ahead and make sure that my paper is completely filled with random colors. So I'm gonna to continue to kind of mix my colors to make a lot of different variations and use them on my paper. I'm gonna to try to avoid just mixing all of the colors together because that will give me kind of a shade of grayish brown. I'd rather have a variety of color and not just a big area of mud. So I should be able to see all of the different colors represented somewhere on my paper. I can find a red, I can find a yellow, I can find a blue. I see a green, I see an orange, I see a purple, and I see some of the colors in between as well. For example, yellow green or blue green. You can see that after my entire paper is filled, I'm gonna add a couple little accent areas. So that would be maybe adding stripes or dots or some type of pattern to some of these areas just to add a little bit of visual interest. I'm going for a red purple here and adding some stripes. I added some green blue dots. Anywhere that I think needs a little bit more detail or a little bit more information, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more to my paper. I can try using big brush strokes or little teeny tiny brush strokes as well. Once I have my entire paper filled with lots of different colors, and a variety of textures or patterns, I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry. Now my paper is completely dry. I gave it some time 
and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it upside down and now I'm going to cut along the lines that I drew before. When I do this, I should be able to cut out all these triangles that should be exactly the same size and shape. It's very important that they are the same size and shape so that they will work for our quilt pattern. Once I have all of my triangles cut out, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a pile and flip them over so I can see the colored side. Then I'm going to grab one of my pieces of eight by eight construction paper. Now I wanna show you how to make the North Star. So I'm gonna start by making a V with two of my right triangles. Next, I'm gonna do exactly the opposite down below, so it looks kind of like a table. I'm gonna do that on the side as well. And on the other side too. When you have them placed correctly, you should end up with a, a square in each corner and a square in the center. And that is the first block. Now, because I made extra triangles, I'm gonna also do a second block. And I like to have a dark one and a light one in case my triangles are really dark or really light. I like to put my light triangles on my dark background and my darker triangles on my lighter background just to help them stand out. I'm gonna do the same layout on my second one as well going for the square in the middle and the square in each of the corners. You can move around the pieces to get a pattern that you like. This one was so bright that I'm gonna move it over to my dark one and I'll add it to my light one instead. You can play around with switching back and forth. If I have pieces that have too much yellow in, they will get kind of lost on my yellow background. So instead I put them on my black background so that they would stand out. Now that I have my pieces where I want them, I'm going to use some stick glue and glue them down. I've gone ahead and glued my pieces to my background. And the only other thing I want to add before I'm finished is maybe a little border. So I have another paper that is nine inches by nine inches and I'm going to go ahead and glue my square to that border. I feel like it adds kind of a nice finishing touch to this project. If you're doing this project with other people, it will also help kind of tie the entire quilt together. We're gonna go ahead and do this and put all of our blocks together so that it will look like a quilt. This quilt with the North Star will point anyone who sees it to the north where freedom is. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe down below.